Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk to you all about DynamoDB transactions. And this is a very exciting feature specifically because DynamoDB is a horizontally scaled NoSQL database. And a big problem with it over the past few years has been that you cannot make concurrent updates to multiple tables at the same time in a transactional format. Uh, so with DynamoDB transactions, you're able to do exactly that. You're able to modify multiple rows and multiple different tables. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly Exactly how DynamoDB transactions work and I guarantee that if you stick it out to the end you're gonna be very comfortable with them and be able to use them in your project so just to start out I'm briefly gonna to touch on what transactions are just as a very quick refresher however I do have another video on this topic I'll put that down in the description section below so you can get more familiar with it uh, so let me just scroll down here to make some room uh, so like I said, the first thing I want to do is just talk about what is a transaction. And a transaction is just basically a unit of work in database language. Uh, so a unit of work. So just basically a box here. Uh, so say in this unit of work, we want to do two things at once on a table or multiple tables. First, we want to insert something into a table. And second, we want to update something else in maybe a different table in a different row. So this thing, these two things together are a transaction. So this is a transaction, also sometimes called TX for short. And what makes this thing a transaction is the fact that this unit or these two things within this unit either all succeed or all fail. So that means in order for this thing to be considered a transaction, you cannot have a scenario where your insert step succeeds and your update fails. Likewise, you can't have a scenario where your insert fails and your update succeeds. The only two allowed operations, let me just make that in green, uh, for something to be considered a transaction are both succeed or both fail. And that's what DynamoDB has been missing for many, many years since basically its existence. And now in 2018, DynamoDB finally supports this. Uh, so you get this all or nothing behavior. You hear that a lot, all or nothing, all or nothing. And that just basically means what I said here, everything must succeed or everything must fail. So now let's move on to how these things actually work in the context of DynamoDB. Uh, so let's move down here a little bit, make some room. Now with this new transactions feature, you get access to two new APIs or two new operations that you can use on your table. Uh, the first one is called uh, transact get items. So transact get items. items. And the second one is called transact write items. Transact write items. Now what you're allowed to do with each of these respective uh, operations, so for get items, what this thing basically allows you to do is to perform multiple reads on multiple different tables all at once. And if any one or any separate thread modifies any item that you are reading while the transaction is taking place, the entire transaction will fail. So what you are guaranteed to get is a snapshot at a particular point in time of a group of items and know with certainty that that is the state at that point in time. Um, so that is the, the use case of get items and it's particularly useful for things like financial transactions, if you need to know the balance of two different accounts at the same time, maybe you're trying to do some transfers or something like that. So that's the kind of scenario that transact get item solves for. It allows you to get a very complete snapshot of a group of tables or a group of rows all at once. Uh, that's not the really interesting one. The one that I really care about is transact write items uh, because it allows you to do some very cool stuff. So with transact write items, essentially how it works is that you pass in a bunch of different operations that you'd like to perform on multiple tables or multiple rows. Uh, so for instance, you pass in um, maybe a list of transactions or a list of updates, so to speak. And so you pass all these things into the transact write items because maybe you want to update all these three things all at the same go. And how it works is that if any of the rows that you're attempting to modify are modified while the transaction is taking place, then the entire transaction fails and is rolled back. Uh, so you really get that all or nothing kind of functionality that you're typically used to using like MySQL or Postgres or any kind of modern RDBMS that you've probably used in the past. Uh, so this is the kind of functionality that you get out of using DynamoDB transact write items API. 
Uh, it's important to note here that Transact Write Items API does not use locks. So it does not use locks, no locks. So what that means is that while you're performing this, any other thread is free to read the content of these rows while this transaction is taking place. However, if any other thread modifies those contents, then this transaction will fail. Uh, typically in other databases, sometimes you see them use locks. So they'll lock the rows that are being modified so that no one can read and no one can write. Uh, the transaction API for DynamoDB does not use this concept. It's taken the stance where it'll just fail the entire transaction as opposed to locking the row so that others cannot read it. Now, some of you may ask, well, how is this different than batch get item or batch write item? Batch write item. And that's a, an important question and a very good question. Uh, for batch write item, you can kind of do the same thing. You can write to multiple different tables and multiple different uh, rows of those tables. Uh, the thing with batch write item is that you get partial failure and partial success. So you don't get that all or nothing guarantee. Um, the only way to get that all or nothing guarantee is to use this transact write items API that is now offered as part of the DynamoDB SDK. So let me just scroll over on my blackboard here, make some more room. Uh, so in terms of pitfalls or things to be worried about or careful about when you're using transactions, you need to be careful of something called a write collision. Write collision. Is that two S's? I don't know if that's two S's or not. And what write collisions refer to is the fact that since you're using transactions and the way DynamoDB has implemented transactions, uh, it means that if you have two different threads that are trying to update the same content or the same rows in a particular table, uh, one of them is gonna fail, one of them is gonna succeed. So you need to be prepared to handle those collisions so that the one that fails can retry after the other one succeeds. Uh, so that's something you need to be aware of. It's gonna consume extra capacity, which I'll get into a little bit later when I talk about the cost model, but just be aware that you're gonna increase the likelihood of write collisions by using DynamoDB transactions. Now, the second thing is that there is a 25 item max for your transact write items and transact read items APIs. That means you can only perform 25 operations at once. Uh, so if you need to do a larger transaction, you're unfortunately out of luck. Now, the third pitfall is that you cannot target the same item more than once in a given transaction. So say, for instance, if you have a list of items that you would like to modify or operations that you would like to take place on your table. Now, let's assume we have a row called T1. Uh, you cannot modify or target T1 for multiple operations within this whole transaction. Uh, so you can only target a given row one time within this transaction. So be aware of that and model your database accordingly. Uh, so that's about it for pitfalls. Again, let's move over and just talk about cost. Uh, so in terms of cost, uh, let's use a different color here, maybe uh, purple. So for cost, uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's essentially double the cost, 2x the cost of uh, just a normal read or a normal write. And the reason that this is the case is because in order for DynamoDB to ensure that no other rows are modifying a row at a given point in time, it needs to read the row twice to ensure that. And the reason this is the case is because there's two steps in the transaction. The first is a read and the second is a commit. So when you're performing a read operation or a transact get items API call, um, there's gonna be two X reads on that row, two X reads on that row. And if you are doing a transact write items on a target, you're gonna use capacity worth two X writes or two X WCUs. So WCUs for the writes and RCUs for the reads. So this is a little bit important if you're worried about consuming too many resources or you're worried about your bill getting out of control. Keep in mind that if you're using transactions, you're going to have a higher bill. Uh, one other small thing is that um, when you have write collisions, you have rollbacks that take place, uh, but you still have to pay for that entire transaction, even if it didn't succeed. So be aware of that if you have a lot of write conditions, you're going to have a lot more cost uh, kind of running up on your monthly bill. So if you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna put another one on the right here for DynamoDB schema design. And as always, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.